Hello everyone, welcome to episode 134 of the Cherry Heart Podcast. I am Sandra and this is a crafty podcast featuring crochet, knitting and sewing for the most part. You will be able to find the show notes for this episode on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and I'll also pop a link in the description box under the video. That's where I will put the names of the patterns and the yarns and the things I talk about so if you miss anything when I say it, if you pop along there I will have it listed. I'll also list colours and things like that. Useful information basically. Um, you will be able to skip this video using the time stamps or time scamps as I said last time to scamper about the video. Um, they're also listed in the description box. I'm on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT and elsewhere around the web I'm Cherry Heart. So welcome! Hello! How are you? How have you been? Um, how have I been? What can I tell you? Not a lot. There are things going on. It feels like my life is suddenly getting, like the busyness is ramping up. It's getting to the end of the, uh, you know, the school year or the college year, I should say. So it's all getting into interesting times. So yeah, I'm on the uh, up ramp of lots about to kick off. So that that's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, I hope things are good with you as well. So thank you ever so much for giving this video a try if you are new. I hope you enjoy it um, and thanks for coming back if you've watched before. That's very kind of you. I think today's one might be a little bit shorter. I feel like I've got less things to talk about. Um, let's talk about this first though because when I brought everything up here I was thinking I was sure I had something else. What have I forgot to bring up? And then I remembered I was wearing it. So here is my Vintage Waves sweater that I have finished. Um, you would have seen it in the beginning. I've done a little intro bit to pop on. Um, yeah so this is um, a pattern by Clarissa Beth um, of the Crochet Cakes podcast and Instagram. I'll do a little twirly twirly. I tell you I've, I've spoken about this a couple of times now on my previous podcast so I don't think I have anything new to tell you um, I will put the yarns that I used in my show notes um, so I've got one main color which is this paler uh, actually that you can see it here the paler color and then I've got a contrast color which is the sort of pinkier variegated colour and then I am patching in these little brown and little peachy sections to sort of create this more uh, patchy effect which is me kind of trying to emulate, emulate one of Clarissa Beth's uh, pictures so she had two pictures of this and I'm just trying to emulate one of them so my only um, problem I had with the yarns I chose is I'm just trying to find my contrast colour. Basically I only had you need two skeins of each of the colours, one of the main colour and one of the contrast colour. So I had two of the main colour but I only had one of the contrast colour and I thought by putting my little bits in hopefully that will be enough. Which it just about was um, but I completely ran out of like the main contrast colour. Um, if that makes any sense. So I wanted my sleeves a little bit longer, it's my point. So on Clarissa Best one where she's done, um, she's got a sort of t-shirt version with short sleeves and she's got one where she has a bit longer sleeves. So I kind of did want to make it down to the elbow. But what I did is I did the body where I wanted that. Then I started the sleeves and I just, like I weighed how much yarn I had and just worked till I had half left and then did the other sleeve. I actually had to take a row off, I think, the first one, just to get them completely even. So that's how long they are. I haven't actually blocked this yet, though. Um, 
I've just put it on and thought actually that doesn't look too bad but I think if I blocked it I think this neck just needs to relax a little bit which if I blocked it I think would be better and I could probably get a little bit of extra length on the sleeves actually I was thinking I might not bother blocking it because it looks fine and the length I've got on the body I'm actually reasonably happy with so I thought I might leave it but actually if I block it I will get an extra bit of sleeve length won't I which will be good but yeah I'm really happy with it I'm really happy with how it turned out I was saying last time that I made size I think I made size 3 and I would normally make a size 2 that would be my size but because I wanted it to fit over the shirt rather than just be worn as a t-shirt I did go for the slightly larger size which I don't think I needed to do actually um, I think it would have been fine without so I did just close up a little tiny bit at the sleeve just to compensate for the fact that I made a slightly too big <laughs> size um, yeah so if I just made my size I would have been absolutely fine but yeah I'm pretty happy with that um, I've got some skirts that I want to wear it with so I wanted it quite cropped um, but it's not warm enough to wear them today so I've just got my jeans on but I do like yeah I do like it I like how it looks I like that the sort of my little patches of color came out quite evenly seemed to work out overall yeah I'm pretty happy with it um, there's not a lot else to say about that I did do a little tiny bit of edging so in terms of changes of the pattern I suppose I'm talking about now everything is exactly as written I just edit I just added that little tiny little bit of extra onto the bottom just to sort of match the neckline um, that was it really and like I say just a little tiny I just took a couple of stitches out of the sleeve just to uh, correct my own mistake sort of thing but yeah other than that the pattern is as written with no changes and yeah I really like it I'm really happy with it I'm um, I could definitely see myself making another one of these I really enjoyed this vintage wave stitch um, I haven't used it before and yeah I think it's really pretty so yeah I think that's all there is to say about that I'll um I was gonna say I was going to put all the information in show notes but you know that because I already said that at the beginning so that's repetition we don't need that so moving on from this then my other finished items which I've talked about are my rabbity uh muffeties um yes so my rabbit mitts so I have finished these and I have blocked them and I'm going to show you now I don't know if, if you were here last time I showed my one mitt and I was attempting to show you sort of a before and after of blocking so I'm um, hopefully I've got a bit in here that I can show you the before of it and this is the after of the same mitt when it's been blocked but I think because I had this one largely neat from here there was a little bit of bobbling going on here but it was largely neat from here I don't think it's going to look too much different I don't know I haven't compared you know I haven't looked back at the old video again but yeah we'll see I'll try to put this over this side so I can put my comparison on the other side but the thing that has struck me so I knit this mitt and then I knit the cuff of the second mitt and then I put it aside for a while while I worked on other things then I came back to it quite recently and finished the second mitt but they are so different my tension has changed so much so I've blocked both of these now so I've tried to even it out as much as I can so I don't know if you'll be able to tell it doesn't look quite so bad on the camera but in real life it looks mega obvious but yeah I mean he's a bit more bobbly anyway I just didn't get my tension so good so when I knit these first time it was on the back of me just finishing my silver forest sweater which had a colour work yoke so I'd done all the colour work for that then I'd done the colour work for this which came out much neater and then I should have gone straight on and done the second mitt so that's my teachable moment with this pattern 
don't stop in the middle of colour work people <laughs> keep on going um yeah but it's so much like the glove was physically you could see that it was bigger than this one this one this the first one was actually a tiny bit tight this one fits better <laughs> I've got to try them on now that I've blocked them. I haven't tried them on since. But I don't know if you can tell on the screen. Let's see. So on this first mitt, can you see how sort of um, much more prominent the grey is on this second mitt? So you would think that I had changed the yarn dominance from one to the other. Mm. Put the grey as the dominant colour on this one and, and like the pink was the dominant colour on this one. That's what it looks like. But I didn't. I didn't. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I did it exactly the same way. Because I'm sure I remember... I just... I think... I don't think I did. I think I kept everything the same. But it's amazing how different they've come out. Look how much neater his head looks than his head, for goodness sake. It's annoying. It's annoyed me. <laughs> I wish I'd done it at the same time. Anyway, I've just gone loosey-goosey with this one, so let's see what the fit is like anyway. They are still ever so slightly. So I tried to sort of pin this one out to kind of block it a bit bigger so that it matched this one better. Actually, they're not bad. That's not bad, actually. So yes, they do... They do feel, this one feels looser than it did. That actually fits quite nicely now. And this one didn't need to be as loose as it was, but it's fine. Yeah, they do, they match in better now. They've been blocking, they're blocked. They are definitely better. Um, just trying to remember who the designer was of this pattern. I'll put it in show notes, obviously. But I'm going to see if the name's going to come to me. It's not. I'll pop it here. Um, yes, but it's the Rabbity Muffeties and Mittens. So there is another version of the pattern where it actually finishes and you get the mitt top. And there is another version of the rabbit design. So as you see here, you've got him facing different ways. So that's all charted and then you can have one of him, his body is forward and just his head is turned. I keep looking at this one and going, oh look, his ear's not as neat as that ear. You can see it's a second ear sitting nicely behind. On this one it looks like, what's going on there? Such a shame. Such a shame. Right, anyway, but I do have absolutely loads of the yarn left so it's knit picks palette i use this one is tea rose this one is finlay heather and yeah i've got plenty left so i could mitt mitt a third i could knit a mitt knit a third mitt but i don't want to because i want to re-knit that one because it's not as neat but i don't think i dare because it might come out the same and there's no point so maybe i should re-knit that one and then at least they'll be the same but this one I want two of these, but I don't want two of these. So, yeah, I, d I don't know quite what to say about that because I felt like I was getting somewhere with colour work after this one because I thought that's definitely neater, that's definitely improvement, hooray! I'm getting somewhere with colour work and then this one's made me feel, oh, okay, but only when you do it consecutively. Then you're back to the drawing board otherwise. So, obviously I I'll need to mix knit a warm-up mitt before I do my next colour work project to kind of get in the flow of it again. I have got another pair of colour work mittens I quite like the look of. Oh my goodness, I said it fit better and now I can't get it off. Okay, there we go. I think it's because it's still damp. Yes, I do love them though. They are the cutest things. What a beautiful design. <gasps> Mona Zilla. I think that's the name, Mona Zilla. It's come back to me. She has loads of gorgeous designs. I think there might be some more rabbits, but there's loads of them. So if you are a colour work fan, check her out because so pretty. So I absolutely love these. I will treasure them. And 
I will even get over the baggy second mitt once I've had a little while to forget about it. <laughs> And I think it might actually have got warm enough that I don't need them now. We are in May. It was absolutely tipping down the other day, as you will have seen. It's it's okay today. I didn't actually get to record yesterday in the end. Time. Ran out of time. But it, the sun is out at the moment, so everyone cross your fingers that spring stays for more than 30 seconds. Because it has not wanted to stay for more than 30 seconds up till now. But yeah, I actually carried on quite happily knitting these in April because I was like, it's still freezing. <laughs> so next up is a new work in progress and it's a test knit for lovely Amy of, uh, no she's not Little Taylor's, is she? Taylor's Studios. So I don't know when this pattern is coming out, I guess. I guess later. <laughs> it's not out at the moment because I'm test knitting it but it's her gorgeous Maybury cardigan. If you follow Amy on Instagram you, I think she's posted pictures. Um, but yeah it's a it's knit, I don't know if you can see because that photo is black and white, it's knit in fisherman's rib which I hadn't actually done before but yeah I thought it'd be a good chance to try it out. So let me show you what I've got so far. So I've finished the first stage. I have just split for the sleeves. So let's push my little sleeves out so you can see. There we go. Look at this fabric I'm getting. Look at the floof factor huge floof factor on this and the, I don't know if you can sort of see how pliable and smooshy this fisherman's rib is oh my goodness it's amazing it does take a while to do because you kind of you knit everything twice almost which sounds awful doesn't it um so I was making the swatch and I was thinking, okay, I don't know what I've done here because this is taking a while. <laughs> but at the same time, once I had sort of a bit of swatch there, I was like, this is gorgeous though. This fabric is amazing. It's almost got like a kind of brioche knitting kind of um, texture to it, I suppose. But yeah. And the button bands are so neat. Look how gorgeous that is. So that's my right side. So I've got my little marker there. To say that that's the right side. But yeah, the construction of it is so neat and tidy and gorgeous. And yeah, I, I can't really say a lot about it, I suppose, because it's a test knit. But yeah, do look out for it when Amy brings it out because I'm really enjoying it. It's lovely. Um, let me just show you the yarn. So I'm using an Elderflower Stitches yarn. Oh, my cake's coming undone. Which I think is in... I'm trying to think of the colourway. It might be Ballerina Slipper. Let's see, this is the one I'm, this is my first one I'm still on at the moment. It's almost run out. Oh, point shoes. There's the ballet connection. Point shoes it's called. So it's a very, very, very subtle peach. I don't know if it's even coming up as peach on this camera actually. But it is in real life. It's, it is very pale though, but I'm also holding it together with a mohair. So this is just drops mohair. I'm not sure what that's called even. Is it just drops mohair? Drops kid silk is what it appears to be called. Um, yeah, so that sort of makes it even more pale. So I had it in mind so when Amy was asking about the test knit I thought oh I, I've got the thing 
just the thing I could use for that. I've got those gorgeous peachy um, skeins from Elderflower Yarns. I thought that'd be lovely. But when I pulled it out, I did sort of think, that is quite a bit paler than I'd remembered in my mind that it was. And sort of holding it together with this, I was a bit... I mean, I could have taken a bit more colour is what I'm saying. But at the same time, I do love it. I do love the subtleness to it. I don't know if I, I haven't got any white to compare it to, so you can sort of see that it is actually a different shade. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I'm not sure what else to tell you about that, just that I love it. I love working on it, I love the fabric I'm getting, and yeah, I think it's going to be a really gorgeous cardigan. Gorgeous. Right, so moving on to, I suppose, uh, pips, patterns in progress, I guess. So I made this Grace cardigan. I finished it a few weeks ago and it is a granny hexagon cardigan, but I've done it in solid grannies instead of sort of granny square grannies. And I added little granny squares to the sleeves and the bottom here and I've showed it on the podcast a few times. Um, so the pattern in progress thing was I was talking about it in my last podcast and saying because people have requested the pattern for it and I, was, and I was wondering what was the best way to do it because I don't think it's a, really a pattern as such it's more going to be it's more a recipe because of the way you make this sort of basic shape here of the cardigan by making a hexagon um, you sort of just keep making that until you get the basic sort of structure of the cardigan. So how the sizing wise and what the pattern is kind of work kind of depends on how big you want to make that initial shape. So it's very much a recipe rather than the pattern. So we were I was asking about the idea of a written pattern versus video tutorial and the sort of majority of people basically thought both would be a good idea which I think would suit it some there's a couple of people that prefer written there's a couple of people that just prefer videos but most people said I think both would hit the spot so you've got a written pattern but you've got the videos as well I think people like that visual reference which I can understand so there is a lot of videos for the standard sort of granny square cardigan um, and some people have already made a sort of cardigan inspired by this. Someone made, um, oh, what was the lady's name? I can't remember your name. I'm so sorry. But she said, um, a co she left a comment, sorry, said that she made a hoodie on her. So I just thought, cool, how cool is that? I like the idea of that. So, yeah, so I'm going to sort of show how I made this one um, and give you just a few ideas of sort of ways to adapt it because I've adapted the shape of mine a little bit and for my second one I'm going to adapt it a little bit more because I had to do a little jiggery pokery with my sleeves so I'm going to see if I can refine that ever so slightly um, and then obviously I've added a bit of length and these squares and things so yes I'm going to make a start on that I have some lovely yarn my second one is going to be pink as the main colour so lovely Stylecraft have sent me lots of lovely pink colour. I think it's called Petal actually, yeah, Petals. So that will be my main colour this time. I quite like the idea of just one in plain, in just in this without the granny squares as well, but I think I'll make it with the granny squares just, well I'll have to so I can show you. Um, and then I think I'm going to go with this sort of peach and just the pale oystery colour. I might omit the deeper red because I love it but I thought I might make a sort of slightly softer version well, than this one, even. Um, so yeah, so if you would like to look out for that, um, I don't know what to tell you about, about how long it'll be. It takes me a while to do things anyway, and I'm very aware I'm just entering this zone where a lot of things are going to be happening over the next couple of months. And I don't want to annoy you all by making you wait. So I'm going to do what I can. But yeah, I can't I can't promise too much. Anyway, what I was going to say was if you want to get your yarn ready, I can tell you what I've got as a guide. Obviously, like I say, it depends how big you will need to make it, like any garment pattern. Um, 
So I'm a 38 chest um, and I made it with quite wide sleeves. I've made, added a bit of length to it. But I want to add some ribbing around the, uh, the sort of collar, around the front bands this time. So last time I used four balls of this main colour, definitely. But I think I went into a fifth ball. Um, so this time I've got five at the get-go to start with because I'm sh I'm sure by the time you know I'm going to need extra for to add the ribbing. I'm going to add ribbing like this. I'm going to add round the fronts. Um, so I'll definitely need more than my four. But like I say, I think I went into the fifth one last time anyway. So for 38 chest, I found that five balls should be about right. If you're, you, you know, you are going to have different requirements depending on what kind of size you want. Um, and I'm also going to sort of give you some ideas of how to change the sleeves a little because a lot of people are saying they don't like how big the sleeves come. But in order to get it to fit you sort of on the body, you kind of you have to keep making the sleeves bigger as well. So I've got a couple of ideas of how to adjust that slightly. Um, but I do think the style of it is to have a sort of a wider balloony style sleeve. That is just the style of the cardigan. So maybe if you really don't like that style, maybe this cardigan isn't for you anyway. But I narrowed mine down ever so slightly and I, you know, I've got a few ideas of how I'm going to do it a bit better next time. So I've got that. Um, but yeah. I'll start putting things together and see how we get on. So finally I shall end with some incoming goodies. Um, some knitting goodies So I've decided to get, or crafting goodies I suppose. Um, so when I was knitting the Rappity Mitts and trying to follow the colour work chart, I was thinking of those um, little thingies you get, I don't know what they're called, just knitting chart holders, but you know where you get like the um, magnets to hold it up and then you've got the bar so you can keep track because I was I've been using like post-it notes to mark the row but if you've got a longer row than a post-it note it's quite awkward and also they don't stick brilliantly the ends curl up so I got myself a knitting chart holder now I'm sure you can get these from quite a lot of places but I remembered that Ellie from class craft house magic had some in her shop so I went along to there and I got this one so it's by Knit Pro, and there was another design with flowers on, but I went for this one of the girl sitting knitting. So basically, what it is is you pull these open, which are quite stiff. You can open it up. So you've got this side where you've got these. Let me take this off a minute because. So you've got these magnets that you can use to hold your chart in place. So those go up here that on your bit of paper um, and then you get this this black magnet ooh, this black magnety bit um, which then sticks on and will show you where you are on your chart and then on the back you've got this you get a pen with it and a pocket to be honest I could have done without that on there it just adds to the bulk and I would rather just keep it as flat as possible really in fact, I mean, I suppose the pen could be handy though, couldn't it? But it's a good idea, but I don't, I didn't really want it. Um, anyway, so my only problem with this when it came, because Knit Pro stuff is pretty good, I find, but it's not, and it's a good price. But what you get is it feels a little bit like what you pay for, like it's good, but it's not great like the price is it's a pretty competitive price it's not super cheap but it's definitely a lot cheaper than a lot of options out there so it's pretty good for the money but it does have a little bit of a sort of cheap feel I suppose but the thing that most annoyed me about it was this so you get these lovely silver magnets and they're really nice, really rounded off, they feel good, they're nice and strong, they clip on. And then you get this strip of black magnet stuff that feels a lot weaker than these stronger ones. But you want it to, you know, these hold the paper on, but you want this to hold it flat. 
But the worst thing about it, and I don't know if you can see now because I've tried to correct it, is it's not straight. It bends. It bends down at that side. So, and it's quite pliable. So at first I thought, oh, well, I'll just bend it back up again and it'll be fine, but it doesn't. It just keeps reverting into the shape. So when you're trying to follow a knitting chart with something that's bent, it really doesn't work at all. So why the heck they didn't put in like a longer bar like this that you could then move and follow, that would be perfect. But instead you've got this sort of bit of sort of bendy old rubberized magnet. You know, like you'd stick on the back of like a pad, you know, those magnetic pads and you can just whack them on the fridge or something and it just they've just got a bit of this stuck to it so it sticks. It's a bit of that. So that was really annoying. I mean, I could have lived with it if it was just a bit cheap and rubbish if it was straight, but considering it was bent and so can't do the job it was meant to do at all, it's a bit rubbish. So what I did was I just got this very sort of cheapy ruler off of Amazon and I thought I'll stick this on the back and then I would just use this. So I've still got the magnet to hold it on and hold it in place and I'll just use this as my straight edge. So I'm just going to snip these ends off so it looks a bit neater. And then I'm just going to use that. Um, so yeah. But having said that, buying this and even with my cheapy ruler fix, it's still considerably cheaper than the next option I found for this, which was this sort of board bit. But then like the mag, and I think it had like a couple of magnets with it, but like the, this bit, the sort of actually follow your chart with the, with a straight line bit came separately and a few other bits came separately. I was like, so once you had bought all of that, you, I think you were sort of twice the price of this. So yeah, I thought, I don't think so. Oh, and the other cool thing about this is, so this bit that holds it closed, you unclip it and then you can hopper it back on the uh, like that way and then it, you can stand up and uh, just get your chart off there so i thought that's quite good you can just stand it somewhere so you could use that for any kind of pattern even if you don't need this to follow the chart you can just have it propped up just so you can see it and sort of knit away off it so i thought that was quite good so overall i'm pleased with it apart from this travesty but I fixed that now, so that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, so I just thought that was worth mentioning. I don't know if anyone else has tried, has got one of these or tried a different one or... Yeah, there was two sizes. This was the smaller size. This is like the A5 size. You can get one that's A4 size. So I was... I don't want to show you the pattern. But I was like folding my bit of paper in half to have it on there is the point. So that's you know my normal pattern printout. I, I just folded it up to hold it on there. But you can get one that will hold that entire bit of paper for you. So yeah, so I added that to the old uh, craft tools, and I also got um, this lovely set from Pretty Fabrics and Trims. So it's felt decorations, and it's the Christmas ones. So again, if you've been here before. You might remember I made the uh, the Easter set. There was like an Easter, was it Easter or just spring? No, spring, spring a ling decoration set, um, and I made those to go on my Easter tree. So I thought I was looking for these at the time, but they were out of stock at the time because I was looking earlier in the year. So she was probably wiped out after Christmas, I expect. Um, but yeah but I kept the tab open and I've been looking and once stock came in I ordered some of these so these are going to go on my handmade Christmas tree so they're part of my handmade Christmas project um, that I'm working on throughout this year um, and just in case you're new the idea behind it is I'm going to have a, a tree and all the decorations on it are going to be completely handmade by me so this will be part of it so yeah, so I'm going to save those till a bit closer to Christmas, I think. But probably, because it's sewing and it's felt, you need quite good light, don't you? So I might not leave it until it starts to get too tart at night. So I might sort of do it in the autumn kind of time. But yeah, that was my other purchase. So looking forward to doing that. 
and most mostly happy with that yes i think that's it from me then and um, that's all i have to talk about today thank you ever so much for joining me and sticking around till the end if you did and i will see you next time well, i hope you get some lovely quiet calm crafting moments until i see you again bye Breen, breen, breen. Fly. Get away. I left the windows open today and now we have fly. <clears throat> That's it. You go out. Bye bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 134. Why did I say it like that? <laughs>